Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emory Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, here on the campus of Colgate University with head football coach Dan Hunt, my distant cousin, Coach Hunt. <laughs> nice to meet you. Good to see you. Thanks for taking time. I appreciate it. No well, problem. Well, you look at 2015. You guys had an impressive run, knocking off. Uh, you were 9-5 in the seat, on the season, 6-0 in the Patriot League. You beat two perennial powerhouses in the FCS playoffs in New Hampshire and James Madison. At what point during the season did you realize 2015 was going to be special, and how does that help you in building and sustaining success moving forward? Um, well, that's a good question. I, you know, I kind of thought going into the year that it could be a special season. Uh, I, I got to go back to the off season after 2014, where um, you know our players showed an incredible amount of commitment, uh, basically from the day that season ended moving forward. Uh, last last summer, we had probably. 80-85% uh, of our team come up here and spend uh, a good portion of the summer up here working out. And we don't have summer school, so, you know, they're kind of doing it on their own. You know, we can't feed them, we can't house them, but yet, you know, they came up and they put the time in. We had a great summer, we had a great off season. We had a, I thought we had a really strong preseason, so I kind of thought going into the year, hey, this could be something, something pretty special. And then we opened up down at Navy. And, uh, you know, Navy was a heck of a team and they beat us pretty good. And then we lost to New Hampshire the first time at home. And then we lost to Yale, giving up a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter. And, you know, you tend to, sometimes when, when the season starts like that, you tend to doubt yourself a little bit. And I remember saying to the team after we lost to Yale, uh, don't keep, don't stop doing the right thing. They've done the right thing for so long, you know, all of the summer, all the offseason, they've done the right thing. And, I, you know, as a coach, I was worried. I was, I was worried some kids might at that point say, well, you know, this year's done or throwing a towel, and they didn't do that. As a matter of fact, I learned after the season, they had a players-only meeting that Monday and said, hey, we're going to work even harder. We're going to make even a bigger commitment. Um, as far as on the field, I really thought that next game, you know, to be 0-3 to be and then opening your league play on the road at Holy Cross, uh, that was a big game for us, and it had some big moments. Um, and we, we got off to a slow start now, and we were down 14-3 to at the end of the first quarter. And, uh, you know, we just made a couple plays right before the half to get close, and then, you know, we were able to turn around and win that game, and that kind of got us going. And, uh, you know, to get that first league win was important for us, to open 1-0 in a conference, especially in a small conference, only six teams. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss any. And, uh, you know, but yeah, we still, you know, then we lost to Princeton and we, we were playing okay. You know, we had a couple more wins. We were playing okay, not great, but then when we beat Fordham uh, at our place, Fordham was in the top 10 in the country. They hadn't lost a league game in a couple years. And our kids were able to go out and for 57 minutes really, really play well and, and have the game in control. But then Fordham made a furious run at the end and we had to defend a, a two point play with no time left to win the game. And, and, and that kind of, you know, to, to, to win a game like that really kind of towards the end of the season got us going to help win the conference. And, you know, as far as moving forward after this season, I think this, this was a great year for us. Number one, uh, as you can see, you know, they're kind of used to winning championships around here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for the, for the team to get another one, that was our eighth championship since uh, 1997. Uh, that was important. But it was real important to win those playoff games. I think that as this league grows and as Colgate tries to, to grow and be a leader in this conference, uh, I, I think this league can be extremely successful at the national level. And, you know, for me to say that's one thing, but you have to prove it. So to be able to go out and win two playoff games on the road, against uh, New Hampshire and James Madison, you know, hopefully that shows that, hey, the, the Patriot League in general and Colgate specifically have what it takes to compete at a national level. So I think it was absolutely huge. Coach, you eat, sleep, and breathe Colgate. I mean, you were a longtime assistant here before becoming a head coach. So in that process, was that like a no brainer? And when you look at the fact that you have been a coach here for so long, does that give you sort of a different or a unique perspective going into the players and a little bit of ownership that most head coaches don't have. 
Yeah, uh, yeah I would say to be the head coach here was, was a no-brain decision. Uh, the only thing that kind of worried me, and, and I was here obviously uh, when when Coach Biddle was the head coach, and, and you know he was the all-time winningest coach in Colgate history. He was the all-time winningest coach in Patriot League history. And when it became kind of apparent that I was going to be able to fill in for him when he retired, there, there's that saying, you know, never be the man that replaces the man. You know? right. and, and that was in my head quite a bit, I'll be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it, to, in order to be, a, to, to be the head coach here was really a, a great opportunity. And I think that kind of ties in with being here so long. You know, uh, Colgate's a great place. Uh, you know, when people ask me, why, you know, why have you stayed in one place so long? And, and, and my answer never varies. It's the same every time. Is when I get into coaching, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to work with great kids, which certainly you do at a, at a place like Colgate. And number two, you want to work at a place where if you do your job correctly, you have the opportunity to win. And that is something that is true here at Colgate. We have the opportunity to win uh, every year. Obviously, we've had great success. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when other opportunities come along to do other things, I always kind of ask, is, is the grass always greener? And, and this is really a great situation to coach. Uh, you know, you, you work with uh, high academic kids who also are, are high achievers on the football field, and, and Colgate is very supported, you know, from the presidential level now, from the from the athletic director's level. You know, it, it, it's a place where winning in football is important, and, and you kind of want to be around that and and that was so at the end of the day you know I think it, it really was an easy decision and then my long time here what has been good was you know I worked with coach Biddle for so long and, and what coach Biddle taught me was not only how to win but specifically how to win at Colgate I'm not going to tell you our formula for for what we do it might not work at other places I don't know but I know it works here and I was able to watch kind of day in and day out what coach Biddle put his emphasis on the type of kids he wanted to recruit the type of relationships he wanted to build and I was able to just kind of look at that and say, okay, you know, obviously I put my own spin on some things and do it my own way, but the, the core values of, of how to be successful at Colgate, I, I had 18 years to look at that and right. say, okay, this is what you need to do to be successful here. So hopefully I can continue that, that trail along the way and, and, and just kind of keep growing the program forward. Coach, you touched up on it, the Patriot League. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like to liken it to the Ivy League and how strong it has gotten over recent years. How strong is Patriot League, and do you think this is this can be one of those premier conferences in the FCS? I think so. Uh, I think it's a very strong league. I think it is getting stronger. I think one of the things is the reason why I think you're seeing the Patriot League get stronger, and I also think you are seeing the Ivy League get stronger. And I think kids today, it's funny, I think they're very, very conscious of the next 40 years of their lives. And I think a lot more of the academic kids who can get an education in a school like a Patriot League school, an Ivy League school, are kind of foregoing some of the other options they have strictly based on football and realizing that I can still play a great level of football and get that education that's gonna get my career going. Whether I make the NFL or not, you still have to do something with the rest of your life. And I think kids today are a lot more savvy. I think that's getting put into them at an earlier age to, hey, go be successful, make sure you give yourselves opportunities. And I think we're seeing it. Uh, I do think uh, specifically to the Patriot League, I think the addition of the scholarships has allowed us to uh, kind of stay at the top of our wish list every year from a recruiting standpoint. So the talent level across the board in the league has gone up. I think you're seeing that. I think this was the the third year in a row that a Patriot League team won a playoff game, and uh, I, I do. I think I think the Patriot League, if we continue to grow and make decisions to to, to put the league forward and 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 to stay current, I think that this league can become. Uh, a very strong league at a national level and uh, you know again to be able to go to a kid and present him that opportunity on a football field and couple it with hey look at the education you're going to get look at the contacts you're going to make for careers look at what you're going to be able to do you know I, I think that gives us a favorable balance on both the academic and the football side so there's really no reason why we should continue to grow. You're the coach of the year for the ECAC you're also the Patriot League coach of the year and it's weird to, to, to ask this question because, you know, you're a coach and players have a different value they put on awards, whether it's the Peyton Award or the Heisman Trophy. Um, were those two accomplishments big for you? And do you value those the same as, say, a player would if he was to win those individual awards? Sure. Um, you know, obviously, anytime you recognize for your work, it's it, it's great. You know, and I know everyone likes to win, win an award that means something. Uh, I think that with these awards, with the Coach of the Year stuff, um, you know, really any award, and particularly in football, 
it says a lot about the team. You know, mm -hmm. Coach Biddle used to have a great saying, he'd say, if you want to be all league, win the league, you know? Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, you look at there are a couple games that if we hadn't won, you know, the, those awards probably wouldn't be here. So, um, you know, it's still, it, to me, when you can win an award at a, at a league level or an ECAC level or a national level, it says a lot about everybody. It says a lot about the whole program. So I want everybody to win those. You know, I don't need just, uh, just me or just a player. You know, I think it's important that, um, you know, our league, our school gets recognized by any group. So uh, I do, you know, I'm proud of them. I, I'm very proud of those awards. But again, I look at all those things as team awards. And uh, if we're getting awards like that, and if I'm winning awards like that, it, it's, it means our team's being successful. And, and when you look at it, how many people are involved with that? You know, it, it certainly isn't just me. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, our, it's our players, it's our other assistant coaches, it's everyone involved. And that's something that, you know, so when I always look at it, when somebody wins something like that, we all win. So. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice. Uh, you know, whether it's whether it's the same feeling that a player has if you win something like the Peyton Award. You know, I don't know, but when you watch most kids give their speech on that, they do say how much they thank their teammates and all that. So, you know, if you're winning awards at that level, it means you're having success. So, I'll certainly take it. And, and it ties right into, let's say, the point of the preparation and work that goes into having a successful season. Because again, if you can't have one without the other, and do you think that kind of buy-in is necessary? for your team to do what they have to do in order to, for everyone to get those awards. Yeah, I think so. And when you look at, you know, you look at this year, hey, we had a good year and we had a lot of kids on the all-league team, you know. Mm -hmm. I think one of the interesting things about this team this year, which I view as a good thing, is here we are, we go undefeated in the Patriot League, we, um, you know, we win two playoff games, we get to the, to the final eight in the whole country. We did not have a single All-American. Wow. which to me is a good sign. You know, we didn't have that one guy we had to rely on to win every game. We had a lot of players make plays. We had a lot of all league players, mm -hmm. but at the national level, you couldn't just say, well, oh, they're all this guy, they're all that guy. We were a team. And, and to me, that's a positive thing. You know, I liked the all league level of things, but when you can go and say, all right, you know, you know, when you usually see a good team, let's give them an all American. You know, right. they have, you can't look at one guy on this team and say, hey, that's the guy who's carrying them offensively or defensively. So, it kind of, it's also then when you look at it as a team, you can't say, here's the one guy you have to stop, too. So, to me, that was a good sign that we are a good football team, not just one player. As we look around, you see a lot of history here. Colgate has a rich football history. I mean, two national championships, two Peyton Award winners, um, college football and pro football Hall of Famers. Do you think that tradition is, do you think tradition is important for a program and do you get the student athletes to buy into that and are they buying into it and wanting to be a part of this? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, you just look around this room and you see, you know, tradition here is important to us. Uh, you know, we know that this current team, we're just one of 126 teams that have played football here mm -hmm. and they've all been successful before us in their own ways and you, like you said, there is so many great teams and great players and great coaches that have been here and it'd be foolish for me not to educate our guys on kind of what they're a part of. You know, we, we, sometimes we say with tradition comes responsibility, you know, and so I want them to understand the great players that have played here before, the Kenny Gambles and the Greg Minuskis and, you know, guys like that and the Ryan Venas and, and, and all of those. And then, you know, you go and, and you look at some of the, you know, Coach Dunlap and Coach Biddle, the guys that have coached here before. And I want them to, to kind of realize they're a part of something special. And one thing we try to do here is we keep our alumni involved. We have multiple alumni. Uh, come back and talk to the team this year before one of our games. Mark Van Egan talked to the team, nice. you know, former Raider, great, you know. So we, I want them tied in to understanding what's what's happened here in the past, and it kind of builds their expectations. They understand football is important here, and it's been important here for a long time. And look at these guys that have gone on and done great things, and look at these teams that have had the success. And what's great about a place like Colgate is our alumni are so great at getting involved is they meet these guys. You know, mm -hmm. not only are they just names on a wall, you know, the ones that are still around, they come back. I mean, Coach Dunlap has been to multiple practices. Obviously, Coach Biddle's still involved. But some of the some of the great players that have played here in the past have come back and talked to the team or mentored these guys. And you know, I think that's how you keep tradition. You know, you can't forget tradition. And and, and so it's kind of a fine line. You know, you know, as a coach, you know, we want to stay modern. We want to stay relevant. You know, in little even something as simple as uniforms and helmets and that. But you know, I can promise you this: we may get new uniforms. We may get new helmets. All that they're all going to have that script gate on it because that's what Colgate is. And and that's something that that our kids understand. They take pride in. And, and I think it's special when you can come somewhere and play where there is that tradition because. You know, they, I'm sure they want to someday be, hey, we want to be that team that people are talking about. And that's mm -hmm. hopefully this last year's team, that's what they did. You know, they're going to be one of the teams that 15 years from now, maybe 
those teams will try to compare themselves to this year's team. And, and, and when you have multiple, multiple years of that, it's something special. So I'm with you. I think tradition's important. I think that, uh, you know, it's our job to, to educate our guys on the traditions of this football team and the school. I mean, Colgate itself, it obviously, it's been around for a long time. We're coming up on our 200th anniversary, and it's, it's a special place. And, and I want these guys to understand, you know, the opportunity they were given to come here and then the responsibility they have to kind of embrace that tradition and, and, and kind of add to it. Coach, you guys play a unique fast-paced yet physical brand of football. Do you think that's style, well, first of all, how are you able to blend both styles? And do you think that yields itself to guys wanting to come play for Colgate? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. I think, um, first of all, the way, the way we make it go is, is obviously we just don't huddle, you know? Um, and, you know, so we make every, on offense, we make every uh, every kid learn all the signals and, you know, you have the ways to get the plays in quickly and, and, and keep the tempo up, but, at the end of the day, you know, it's no secret we like to run the football. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to do that, you have to be a physical football team. And, you know, I always believe when you run the ball, okay, or you throw a high completion, a high percentage pass, all right, somebody on that defense has to make a tackle every play, mm -hmm. okay? If you're gonna be, if you're gonna throw a quick out and step out of bounds or throw an incomplete pass, whatever, defense doesn't have to do anything, it's second down or whatever. Mm -hmm. We'd like to think when you play Colgate, somebody on that defense knows I'm going to have to, you know, bowl up and make a tackle 80 times today. Someone's got to do that, you know. And eventually, by the fourth quarter, we like to think that we've got people kind of worn down to where, you know, maybe they're not quite so willing. Maybe when they're really coming at us and holding us to three in the first quarter, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden those are six-yard gains in the fourth quarter. And you know, we recruit to that. We know that that's our identity. We want to be a physical, hard-nosed, downhill running football team. And, and that's what we recruit for up front and at running back and at quarterback. Now, obviously, we still have our big play wide receiver. It's funny, we've had, we've had some of the best receivers in league history play here, right. um, but you know, we're kind of known as this running team. And, you know, but as far as the philosophy of it from recruiting, particularly up front offensive line wise, you know, we'll take a kid. Our offensive tackles don't have to be six, seven, you know. I want a, I want a hard nosed, I want a physical kid who's going to finish a play and get after you. You know, I always say, you know, we're still, we're an FCS team for a reason. So next year, you know, when we line up against Syracuse, you know, I, I want to be able to physically see a difference between them and us. You know, they should be bigger than us, you know. And the reason why I say that is, is, if you look the same as an FCS, as an FDS team, well then the difference between the two isn't your physical, it's your heart or it's, you know, right. and I want our kids to have the, you know, I, we always say you, you've got a national championship, you've got a Rose Bowl heart and you've got a Rose Bowl motor and you've got a Rose Bowl work ethic. It's just you're 6'2", not 6'5". That's the kids we recruit. You know, we want the kids, particularly up front, who are going to just physically get after you and, and not let up. And then the same thing with the running backs. You know, our running backs are fast. You know, obviously, uh, you know, we, we've had some great ones. We have Walter Payton Award winners, but they're also physical kids. You know, our run game is downhill. You know, it's between the tackles for most of it. And you got to enjoy that, that violent yardage, you know. Um, and then defensively, we've uh, as long as I've been around with Colgate, I mean, the, the, the mantra is stop the run. You know, defensively, we're going to stop the run. We're going to be a physical defense, and um, yeah, I think that I think that we, it does kind of. You got to get that buy-in right from the start, and the way to get it from the start is, is that's how we recruit. We don't make any qualms about it that we're going to do inside run, and we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about the process of winning a game, and you better enjoy, you know, a good hard Monday practice, and you know everything that comes with it. And those are the kids you want, and then there's no surprises when they get here. And uh, you know, to be able to continue to do that and, and find the right kids has been something. That, that we kind of take pride in, you know, when we recruit, it's it's some of the kids we recruit, not a lot of other, other people have recruited, particularly at the quarterback position. I think we've had some great quarterbacks mm -hmm. and, you know, the kind of kid we're looking for might be a little bit different than some other teams are looking for. So, you know, they might not be as highly recruited as a couple other guys, but at the end of the day, we always talk about you got to get the, the, the right kid, not the best kid. And what we mean by that is it's the fit for everything, for our culture, for our offense, for our defense. And, um, you know, when you have an identity, you know, and, which is nice. And it certainly this has been here long before I got here. Colgate has an identity of how they play football. To me, that's a compliment. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can always at the end of the day kind of push back and say, this is what we are. And when you can do that, you know, when, when things kind of start to break down, you know, all right, well, let's go back to what we are. What are we? Mm -hmm. And all of our kids know it. They believe it. And, um, you know, I think that that definitely helps identify us. It gives us an identity that we can kind of lean on and win.
You hit on a couple of points um, that kind of lead into my next question about your coaching philosophy. What would you say your coaching philosophy is? Um, my coaching philosophy is, is, I truly believe this, I believe as coaches we're teachers. Mm -hmm. And you know, football, and, and a lot gets said about everything, how football correlates to life and all, but it does, it does. Mm -hmm. That's why you, you hear it so much, you know, is, is usually when you hear something a lot, it's because there's a lot of truth to it. And I think that, that what you learn in football, I mean, you know, when you look at a given play on offense, you know, Five guys on an offense and every play will go out and do whatever they're going to do and they have no chance of touching the football. No chance. And yet they're still out there. And to me, that's kind of how life works. You know, you do a lot of things that for the good of others or for the good of your family or for the good of whatever, and you may not get any of the glory or maybe no, people may not even know you're doing it, but still you're going to go out and give your best. And I think that that, that portion of football ties in so well with um, life. and. You know, but as far as coaches being teachers, you know, one thing we try to do is um, teach our kids why. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to do something. You know, with our offense, we don't just give a playbook and say, "Hey, if I'm the right tackle on this play, I do this." You know, they understand what everyone's doing behind them. Um, you know, and, and to me, that's that's what coaching is. You know, I don't want kids to just rote memorize. It's not like you're studying the night before a test and then it flushes and all goes away. Right. I want them to understand kind of the big picture and uh, you know uh, our our tackle our offensive line knows our running backs rules on the zone play you know because it affects how they block and I think that's coaching that's teaching you know it, it's it's taking 11 people whether it's offense or defense getting them to buy in together okay mm -hmm. and and work as one and you do that when you empower them with that knowledge of beyond their role. Obviously, you know, when you're a freshman, your first couple of days, you're just learning where to line up. Right. They may not know much, but, <laughs> but when you get them going, you know, I think that, you know, when, when everybody has that buy-in of, we know why we're doing it, and, and we're, you understand, it also helps you, if you understand everyone's role, when something breaks down, you kind of know, all right, well, oh, this went wrong, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this way to help out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just kind of ties everything together. And that's, to me, how we like to teach. We like to teach big picture. We also like to give the players some input. You know, the, the more kids have a role, the more input there is, um, the, the more buy-in you're gonna have. So we try to play as many kids as possible, whatever the role is, and they, they know, all right, this Saturday I have this role. And as a coach, you know, one of the things in my philosophy for every kid in the program, Give them a defined role. And some kids, hey, your defined role is to give the best scout look at right tackle that you can, be the best student that you can, be the best person that you can. And understand your role and have that, you know, that way they have goals and are they measurable and are they attainable and can they get to them? And they know they're con contributing. And, um, you know, I think it's a two-way street. I really do. I'm not one of these guys, I'm, you know, we run a discipline program, I think. I think it takes discipline to go here and, and succeed here, but we're not, you know, I'd say we're probably not the big yellow screamers that some people are, you know, it's a little bit more communication. And, you know, I, I'm a believer that, you know, the loudest coach doesn't always win. The loudest coach isn't always the best coach. You know what I mean? You can, you, you have to, as a coach, be able to assess each kid and realize how to get through to them. Because there's not just one way, right. you know, kids, it, it, it's, again, it's been said in coaching all the time. It's not what I know, it's what the players know. And so in order for me to teach a kid, some kids have a learning style where it needs to be written to them. Some kids have a learning style where they have to write it or it has to be video. And as coaches, we have to adapt to each kid to make sure that they're learning and getting the same message delivered unique ways. So communication is important. Listening, you know, listening to your players, evaluating, you know, what makes them tick, I think is important too. And, and that's something that in my philosophy of coaching, kind of lends itself again to teaching because you know? if you were having this conversation with a math teacher mm -hmm. I'm sure the same thing would be well not every kid is going to learn this equation or learn this formula the same way I have to kind of make sure that I'm teaching it in enough different ways that everybody gets it and that's to me that's a challenge in football because it's not only the teaching it's the motivation it's the keeping them you know keeping them doing the right thing off the field and you have to you have to kind of assess each kid and, and, and do it that way and that's where assistant coaches obviously are huge because they have a little bit closer relationship in that little bit smaller group with them than it is just hey me with 90 guys or say my receiver coach has 10 guys mm -hmm. you know so he he's going to have that a little bit be able to, to be that first wall of identifying you know what each kid's needs are if i had to do it again Obviously, nowadays, things have changed. I mean, everyone has access to every school across the country. What would a student athlete get from going to Colgate, or why would a student athlete, or why would I choose Colgate? Sure. 
you know, I, I, the short word win. Okay, and what I mean by that is, obviously, you know, again, like I talked about, why I've been here so long is, is this is a place where if you enjoy playing meaningful football games, if you enjoy, you know, the pressure of competing for titles and winning titles, um, I think we've proven over a very long sample period that you're going to have an opportunity to win here. I'm not going to promise you you're going to win here. Obviously, we have to do it each year, but you're going to have the opportunity to, to play for rings. Um, you know, we have a stat we use since 1997. You know, we've recruited over over 200 players to come to Colgate. Every single one of them has a championship ring. Okay, and and that's something we take great pride in. And and then, but also win in life. You know, when I look at you know all the, you, you always try to get information on your school. Hey, what are the good stats of our school? Blah blah blah. You know, you know our graduation rates in, in the upper 90 percent every year. Our kids are, are are successful in their career. You know, whether you look at you know the amount that get into law school or get into med school, or you know you look at the pay scale of how our alumni are like the in the top ten as far as how much they're paid. Mm -hmm. You know, the job opportunities after you're done here are something special, you know, and you combine that and, and it really combines a lot of things. It combines students and athletes. So, you know, you're, if you're a driven student and you want to exceed there, excel there, but you also want to excel in the football field, we match them together. It's a, it's a division one school where, you know, if you want that big time feeling of, of, of athletics from a facility standpoint and travel and all the mm -hmm. division one stuff, it's there, but also the smaller class size, you know, it mixes, you know, there's 20 kids in a class here, you know, it's not like you're going to be in the back of a 200 person classroom getting lectured, it's, it mixes again big time athletics with smaller classes and mixes those two together well and then you look at even where we're located you know we're located in Hamilton New York this beautiful upstate New York college town you know it ain't New York City obviously but you know it mixes our you know I've been here I say this a lot when I recruit I've been here 20 years we've had kids from all over the country and you know big city small town never once have they come to me and say coach I'm bored you know <laughs> so socially you know you get that good part of, of our kids are going to be entertained there's a lot to do it's college you have fun you make friends but also you're in this little town that, that really offers this unique way of living where life's a little bit more simple so really you look at those three things it just kind of brings together kind of what most people are looking for and like I said I've had chances to go and do other things but when I see the quality of person that Colgate brings in and the quality of person that Colgate puts out and has been doing it for so long I've met so many alums since I've become the head coach here and the common trait of them is they're just these successful driven people but they're just great people and they want to help and it's 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 I've never seen a place where the alumni are so active in helping our kids and you know the the school cares so much about the development of, of, of everyone you know not just you know our football facilities but if you look our library facilities everything around campus they take great pride in everything we do and, and who wouldn't want to be a part of that you know you come somewhere where where excellence is expected but the tools of excellence are available what more do you want and that's something that we have here and, and hopefully we can keep it going for a long time well the good part is you, you've been successful on the field guys have been successful in the classroom and successful in the community and again if, if you're a high school student you'd be silly not to choose Colgate you know I would definitely come here it's tradition education and being in a smaller town growing up in a bigger city myself mm -hmm. I understood how much you, you learn about yourself in a small area where you're forced to fight for, for resources and, and do things mm -hmm. that you live simply sure and you understand the benefit of college you have to appreciate the campus itself and I think that just leads itself to guys having that attachment to their university and Kobe definitely has that. Too. That they do, that they do and, and and I agree, you know, and one of the things you have in, in Italian is you don't have a lot of distractions, right. you know. I could come down, if we were in New York City, I could take the recruit and show them downtown New York City and all the Times Square and all that stuff. If, if you're playing Division One sports and you're attending a top notch college, you're not going to go there anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. So here we have kind of everything right where we need it and, and I think you said it best, I'm going to bottle that last talk. And <laughs> use it, use it. <laughs> well, I definitely wish you guys the best luck. This upcoming season, look forward to seeing you guys compete in Patriot League. I'll be on the call for a couple of games. Nice. Good luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.